Today we're going to be talking about building a startup and what is the best tech stack to use to build a startup. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you enjoy this kind of content. So let's jump into it. There are many options that you can actually choose when it comes to building a startup. One of the first decisions you will need to make in regards to what technology you're going to use is what is the means of distribution? So where are your customers going to be accessing your product or service from? The decisions you would make varies depending on the platform or the distribution of your uh, product or service. So if it's based on mobile, then you're talking about creating a iOS application or an Android application or perhaps both. But if it's going to be web-based, so users are going to access it via the web browser, then you have a even wider selection of tools and platforms that you can use to build your startup. The next question you need to ask yourself is, firstly, are you a developer? So if you're a developer, then you're wanting to understand the technologies that you already know that can actually be used to build that product. Do you have enough knowledge already to build that product from your existing skill set? And if you don't have enough knowledge to build the product, then you should be looking at what tools you can use to achieve that task. On the flip side of that is if you're not a developer or possibly you are a developer, but you have not got full stack experience. So then the options become a little bit different again. So I would say that if you are not experienced or you are not a developer, then you should be looking at some of the no code solutions. There are a number of different no code solutions out there. Now, for example, if you're doing a uh, e-commerce related business, then maybe you could use something like Shopify. What about if you know how to code and you already have the knowledge to build both the front end, the back end, and whatever server configurations you need, then I would advise you not to go and learn a new technology. So maybe you are a full stack developer and you have the knowledge to build a full service or a full product. So if you have that knowledge and you know that you can build the startup that you're, you're aiming to achieve, then the best use of your time is to take the existing skills that you have and use Lowe's to build your startup. When it comes to building a startup, the most important thing is time. You want to be able to build your startup in a short enough period of time that you maintain interest and you maintain focus and you maintain the, the energy and the stamina to really get through it and complete the product. And this is something I've experienced over the years. I've, I've tried to build several startups in the past, one of which I've sold before. I have several other ones that kind of went wayside um, midway through the creation of the startup or even after it's launched. So the hardest thing about startups, in my opinion at least, is maintaining interest and maintaining focus. And I think that the biggest way to give yourself a chance at creating a successful startup is to build it quickly. And that means using the tools and the skills that you already have. What about the scenario where you are a business owner, for example, or you don't have the technical knowledge, but you want to hire someone? So that is a different scenario. So you are at the position where you can actually choose freely the technology that you use. So perhaps you have access to developers that can build software for you or can build web applications for you. Or if you've decided that you want to outsource the development of your application, so whether that's a mobile application or a web application, for example, then you've got to think about a couple of different things. You've got to think about the access to talent. So the connections that you have or the, the people that you know that could do this work, what skill sets do they have already? You've also got to think about budget time frame so how quickly can they deliver this project and finally you've also got to think about how suited the technology is to what you're trying to achieve now normally for web-based startups i would advise something like ruby on rails or you could also choose django so django is on python ruby on rails is on ruby language i personally think that both ruby on rails and django are great frameworks to build a web application. The reason I would recommend both of these frameworks is that they can be used to build web applications really quickly. And a lot of the functionality that you need for your application, whether it's authentication to allow users to sign in, sign out, or uh, create a new account, lots of that functionality can be dropped in using existing code. So in the case of Ruby and Rails, you have gems. So gems are third party code that has been written and you can reuse it as part of your new application. So that's open source code that you can just drop in and use. 
So that makes it really quick to build applications. So you don't have to go and write the same code over and over again. You can reuse it for new projects. If you've decided already that you're outsourcing the development for your startup, then if it's a mobile application, then you're probably wanting to use something like React Native, or alternatively, you could use Flutter. Both of these technologies are really, really good at building mobile applications. And the really nice part about it is that you can build the application once. So you have one source code, and you can use that to launch apps on both iOS and on Android. So you don't need to have two separate code bases in order to do that. So I think that's a really good option because it allows you to save time, save money, and you will also need less developers. So the existing development team or the individual that you hire to build your mobile application, they will know how to write the code for both the iOS version and the Android version. So you don't have to have multiple developers maintaining different code bases. That will really save you a lot of trouble down the line. So you've got the existing code base that can be managed or developed by either one person or a team who are managing that. So just to recap, the main things I think you should be considering is that if you're a developer, then where possible, you should be using the existing technology that you know already. Now, I know it's always tempting to pick up a new language or to learn a new framework. But when it comes to building a startup, I think the best way to do it is to be constantly shipping code, making improvements. And the easiest and fastest way to do that is to use the existing skill set that you have. So you work with the tools and the skills that you already have where possible. And that way you have the momentum and the energy to carry the project to the finish line. So you don't want to be building something that just sits on your computer. Ultimately, you want to be building something that you can put out to the world and get real people, real users who are testing out your product. So that's about it for this video. That's my thoughts on what technology you should use when building a startup. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to give it a like if you enjoyed this content and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all in the next one.